G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I'm going to look at one of the newest breed of micro FPV quadcopters. And no, it's not this one. This is actually the, well, I like to think I sort of gave this whole micro quadcopter thing a bit of a kickstart way back when I took a Wilkira Ladybird and I added a little pack on the bottom which had camera, video transmitter and a separate power supply um, all in one. So basically it turned your ordinary Wilkira Ladybird into an FPV quadcopter probably the smallest one that had ever been made at the time. Now shortly afterwards, of course, Walkera reduced, produced their own FPV pack for the Ladybird and you could buy them off the shelf. But I, I sort of pioneered this many, many years ago. In fact, if I can find it, I'll put a clip to a link to the video in the description of this video. It was probably on my XJet channel, but right. So things have advanced a long way since then. And perhaps the most popular micro quad on the market has been the Mini Whoop. And everyone flies them. They're a great thing to fly indoors and, you know, close proximity outside are wonderful. You can't really break them. They're, you know, just fun. And of course, now the Chinese are getting in on it. And I've seen a whole host of ads on Banggood and other places for these Chinese mini whoop killers. And they're all little quads, mainly with brushed motors and fairly simple flight controllers. So have they done it? Well, I don't know. The Mini Whoop is still, I don't have one, but from what I've seen, it's still a pretty good sort of a quad. You know, it's really, really got some strong features. But now, Emacs con contacted me a couple of well, months or so ago and said, we've got a Mini Whoop killer. And I thought, mm-hmm. And so they sent me one. And here it is. Oops. Yeah. The battery's on the bottom, as you can see, so it's a bit wibbly wobbly. Um, that's it. That is the Baby Hawk. I think it's Baby Hawk 85, and I think 85 refers to the distance between centers on the motors, so 85 millimeters. Um, interestingly enough, it's about 85 grams as well, so it's the 85 twice. And there it is. That's what it is. Now, I'll take the battery out because I'll tell you a bit more about that in a moment. But here it is. That's the machine. Brushless motors. Now, that's the big thing. Brushless motors, these are going to last a whole lot longer than your brushed motors and they're going to deliver more power and more efficiency. So that's that's a bonus because these little quads, often they don't get a lot of duration and this one only uses a 300 milliampere hour two-cell battery. So you wouldn't expect this to last a long time in a brushed quad and of course in a brushless quad, hopefully it will last a little longer. But this comes as a plug and fly and apparently there's going to be a ready to fly version as well. This is a pre-release version so there'll probably be some small changes from this one to the one that you might buy if you decide that you want one and you go and order it. Now, <clears throat> it has a, I think it's a 520-line CMOS video camera, so it's not going to be uber sharp, but, you know, for flying indoors close proximity, you probably don't need uber sharp. It's uh, 20 milliwatts on this one, but I understand that the production units will be switchable between 20, or 25 milliwatts, sorry. I understand the production units will be switchable between 25 and 200 milliwatts. So, yeah, I don't know, 25 milliwatts gets you a long way if it works properly. One thing that is different from the pictures I've seen on the net is it now has a sleeve dipole rather than a circularly polarized antenna. And I'm not so sure that's a good idea at all because one of the big problems with flying indoors in close proximity to buildings and things like that is you do get a lot of reflections. You know, typically buildings, the walls and things can be quite reflective and if you're flying around fridges and maybe flying around a metal building, then not having circularly polarized antennas can be a big drawback. You get a lot of reflections, a lot of multipathing, the video will look like crap. Remains to be seen if that's going to be the case with this little baby. Now, um, so nevertheless, I did use a sleeve dipole on my Walkera backpack, if you recall. See, sleeve dipole. I did the same thing because it's light, and that's the main thing. You want to keep the, the weight down on these things. A heavy quadcopter is not a happy quadcopter. The lighter you can make it, the longer the batteries last, the more sprightly the performance. So I guess they made a decision. This was going to be the lightest option. Now, I tend to think, actually, they should have one of those on. See, that, the two pieces of, or three pieces of circuit board are not going to be very heavy at all and it's also, it's compact enough to fit on there quite nicely. If this works out alright, I may put a Pagoda antenna on here and benefit from the circularly polarized signal that it produces. Now, this came as a plug and fly, so I had to put a receiver in there and they nicely, nice people sent me a receiver. It was the FreeSky M XM Plus and that's it sitting on the back there. Um, you can see it. It's really small. It's a tiny receiver. Full range, they tell me. Two antennas, which I've run down the bottom there, keeping out of the propellers. Um, and it has S bus output. Really nice receiver. I might do a separate review of that because it's worth that on its own. But to fit this receiver, I had to do a little bit of fettling and soldering. Show you what I mean. Now, as you can see under the camera down here, there are three little pins that poke out of the board. 
and you have to connect that up to your receiver. You could plonk the receiver right on top and solder directly, but that makes it difficult to get it off if you need to. So I ran some wires from those little pins right around the back to the receiver, which I then stuck on the back of the focus, on the back of the video transmitter. 40 channel video transmitter, LCD display, little button for changing channels. That should be all honky dory. Um, there is the micro USB port for tweaking your flight controller. And of course, if you're buying the plug and fly version, you will have to tweak it. Set it up to your transmitter and set your transmitter up to the center points on the board. Now it runs beta flight, not a problem. That was pretty painless, pretty straightforward. The only problem I did find was that my com the computer I was using to do the configuration had been only used with NAS boards. So when I went to use it with this as an F3 board, I had to install some new drivers, otherwise it wouldn't talk. Little things. Now those sort of things can actually catch out young players. So this came with absolutely no documentation whatsoever, um, being a pre-release model, of course. But I certainly hope that Emacs decides to do some decent documentation because if you'd given this to someone who knew very little about quads and setting them up, they'd probably be completely lost. For example, the pinouts on this connector on the board there, they're not labeled. No documentation. I had to reverse engineer that to find out which was plus minus an S bus so I could connect up to the right pins on the receiver. So little things like that which will really confuse the snot out of your average um, young chappy might be worth documenting. Now, um, this has prop guards of course, not, not uh, ducts like the mini whoop. So looking at these propellers here, these are quite broad tips so we're going to need a lot of tip losses. I've done videos on this before. I'll link in the video on propeller efficiency and ducting uh, into the description of this video. But basically, big broad tip props, like this sometimes called bullnose props, are not very efficient. So even though our brushless motors will be more efficient, we're going to lose efficiency because of these propellers. And that means I wouldn't expect fantastic flight times. Also, because these aren't ducts, they're just a guard, um, you're not going to get the improvements that ducts offer for propellers. So again, we're missing out on that. Now, they will of course provide protection against the sort of little knocks that you get banging into the curtains and the, the soft furnishings around a house, but they're not going to provide really big protection because if we look at that, the guards themselves are actually quite flexy and they can bang into the propeller as you can see. So they are lightweight protection and they can be removed. If you look on the bottom, they're just bolted on. You can unbolt them if you don't want to. Save a little bit of weight perhaps. I'd leave them on. I'd leave them on because I don't know. Um, this is not going to be a racing mini quad. It is a tiny micro quad. As such, it'll probably fly, fly, it will probably fly quick enough to be fun, but it won't beat the pants off a mini quad or anything like that. You just dream it if you think that's going to happen. Now, one thing I did find missing from this is there are no LEDs. Where are the LEDs? It didn't light up like a Christmas tree at night or in low lighting. There are some LEDs on the flight controller. That's all I seem to see. So it would be really nice if it was brightly illuminated so you could fly in the evening around your house, whatever. Because indoors at night, with the, even with the indoor lights on, sometimes it's not that bright. Nice to have something that lights up really brightly. Of course, that would use more battery. So hmm, something to consider there. There's always trade-offs. Everything's a trade-off. Make it stronger, it gets heavier. Um, add LEDs, the batteries don't last so long. There you go. So hmm. now, the, as I say, it came with a two cell, um, 300 milliampere hour LiPo battery, which should provide, in fact, um, I expect it'll provide about three minutes of flying time if you're just cruising around. Not a lot. Not a lot, but these are cheap as beans, so you can buy a dozen of them, charge them all up before you decide to have a flying session. That's probably not too much of an issue. Now, as I say, this camera is a seven, five, sorry, a 520 line CMOS camera, so I'm not expecting big things. It's also got a really, really short lens, which means it's very, very wide field of view, which is probably good for flying proximity, especially indoors. You need to be able to see a really wide view of the world or you bang into stuff. The downside is it does tend to make it look like you're flying in a fishbowl. You get a lot of distortion near the edges and it becomes sometimes difficult to judge distances because things are so, the, the whole field is so distorted. But we will find out. And as I say, this is not a precision flying machine. It's not designed for racing. It's designed for having fun. And those things shouldn't detract too much from that goal. So I think what we'll have to do is charge it up um, and go and see if the damn thing flies. Let's give it a go. There we go. It's a bit precariously balanced on the battery, I'm afraid. The because uh, the battery hangs down underneath, <laughs> it doesn't balance. But I'll start off in self-leveling mode, and it should right itself. So let's have a look and see. Here we go. Well, it certainly seems to be nicely manoeuvrable with that beta flight. Seems good little bit of punch not not as I said not as much punch as you might hope but it's only a 
micro quad so it's looking good looking good this is stop tune wow that's pretty uh which way are we heading towards ourselves got disoriented for a moment there didn't see we're heading towards myself so look at that that's um uh, yeah all in all that's not too bad not too bad at all it's a pretty good pace of liquor speed Yeah, that's not too bad at all. Excuse my shaky thumbs. <clears throat> that's not bad, not bad at all. I'll try it again with my camera at a different angle because here we go. That's not too bad. That's nicely maneuverable. Look at this. Woohoo! Where am I headed? I'm heading towards myself, I think. No, I can't tell. Orientation is a huge issue, isn't it? Okay, so that's the front. <laughs> Orientation is a real issue if you're flying line of sight. You've got to be able to tell which way it's pointed, and it's actually really hard with a tiny quad like this from a huge distance. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it flies really nice. Line of sight flies very nicely. Look at that, eh? Just sits there. It's a pretty calm day today, but I mean, this all in all, this is um, this is the kind of uh, performance you want from a micro quad. That's pretty hands off stable. Look at that. Whoops. Beautiful, that is. I'm going to get disoriented again. That problem, didn't I? Here we go. Which way are we headed? Oh. <laughs> God, orientation is so hard with flaky old eyes and tiny little quads, I've got to say. There we go. So that's it. Flies nicely, line of sight, to do some FPV. Lovely. Right, so we've just had an FPV flight. It was uneventful. It flies really nicely. It really is quite quick. The wide-angle lens gives an impression of speed, which is a little bit greater than the speed itself, but it's exciting to fly. It's fun to fly. Very controllable. You can fit through narrow little gaps, and when you want to go fast, you can go fast. The weakest, weakest part of the system is the video system, I'm afraid. And it's not even that camera. Uh, the, the conditions today were pretty damn good. Let's just take a look at some of this footage. As you can see, brilliant blue skies, but notice the sun, we still got green grass while the sun is in frame. So CMOS cameras have come an awfully long way since the old days when any appearance of the sun would result in an instant darkening of the ground. Now they still don't perform that well, some of these cheap ones in cloudy conditions, but look, this is brilliant. So there we go, nice and colorful. Um, and as you can see, video pictures, the video signal strength is okay, but notice there's quite a bit of flickering here. Now this is multi-pathing. This is probably not a good environment to be flying in because we've got metal buildings here, but multi-pathing with these linearly polarized antennas, they make for a lot of breakup in the signal, a lot of interference. Uh, you know, the, I think I will put a circularly polarized antenna on this craft. It's gonna make a world of difference to the way it flies. It will be just so much better, honestly. But uh, yeah, the craft flies quite well. Now I had a 350 milliampere hour battery on here, a Zippy 350 milliampere hour battery, which is a lot bigger than the 300 they provide, but it gave me a full two and a half minutes of flying and I still had 30% left in the battery. So yeah, three minutes is probably not an unreasonable duration. You can see I'm not sort of just nannering around, I'm, I'm giving it some welly, so it's kind of uh, a good average kind of flight. But you notice, I noticed also as it gets near the end or the lower in the battery capacity, the video signal seems to get worse. It's almost as if the camera's doing something strange. So it is possible that they're not using low enough dropout regulators on those circuits in the thing. I have to do a bit more checking on that. You can see it's getting quite bad now. And I flew that area before it wasn't quite that bad. But uh, I don't know. Um, I'll do some more flying before I make a final call on that one. Um, yeah, so as you can see, it's a fun little machine to fly around in a small space. 
there you go, that was an example. See how that went to white and we've got these black lines that come through it. I don't know what that's all about. That sort of looks like voltage drop and those black lines look like ESC noise. So mm, I'm wondering if the filtering could be a whole lot better. See now it's getting quite bad. We're getting towards the end of the battery run here and yeah, that, that's kind of a regular pulsing almost of the of the um, signal. But that could also be caused because we're passing through the Fresnel zone and getting reflections at regular intervals because they're moving at a fairly steady and slow speed. But see, it weaves its way through these bushes quite nicely. I'm no master pilot, as we all know, but I didn't even crash it. That's not a bad thing, is it? And uh, so that's about it for the, what is it, Baby Hawk 85, Emacs Baby Hawk 85. It certainly seems nice. If they tidy up a few loose ends, it'll be great. Now, people have asked, does it have an OSD? Well, can you see an OSD? No, it doesn't have an OSD. It's an F3 flight controller, but there's no OSD. So you'll know when the battery's flat. Very simple system, totally reliable. You'll know when the battery's flat because it'll fall out of the sky. But a timer on your transmitter will probably achieve that. It's a shame they didn't put telemetry in because this has got the free sky. I could have a battery alarm on here and it would tell me it's time to land. But there you go. What was that? That was... Uh, around about 2 minutes 30 because I had a bit of faffing around on the ground. So two and a half minutes and there was still plenty of battery left. So yeah, endurance is exactly what I thought it would be. And just before we go, let's check the weight on the scales that don't show the blood. So this is the bare quad with prop guards, everything, a receiver on, all ready to go except for a battery and it is 74 grams. Now obviously the final flying weight is going to depend on the size of battery you use. I'll go get some batteries and we'll look at what the different weights will add. Right, this is the 300 milliamp two cell pack they sent me. That's a whole 15 grams. Uh, surprisingly enough, that's, let's have a look at this. This confused me a bit. 300 milliamps, this is a Zippy 350. Look at the difference in size between those two packs. This has got, only got 50 milliamps more, according apparently the Zippy, but look, it's massively bigger. How much does it weigh? 30 grams. That's quite a bit more than the 17 gram or 16 grams. Nearly twice as much. Nearly twice as much but it's only got 50 milliamps more capacity. How does that work? I don't know. And then we have, I found one, a Zippy 800. And the interesting thing is that the Zippy 800 is actually almost smaller than the Zippy 350. So how the hell does it, have they mislabeled these or something? How can that be a 350 pack when this is supposed to be an 800? Both two cells, let's see how much this weighs. Wow, that's 42 grams. And how much was the other one? 31, yeah, okay. so. Um, obviously it's most sprightly with the little light pack. I flew FPV with this one and that was that gave me the you know basically three minute flight if you want it. Um, I will try it with this one. It's I noticed the difference between these two. You did notice a bit of punch when a loss of punch when you went to the bigger battery so it's going to be really what you intend to do. If you're just flying around through through the halls inside the house and whatever then the slightly bigger capacity may be good for you because you're not going to need a lot of punch if you're flying through the hall room of your house. But there you go. That's about it. Um, not much else to say except I did run the a linear antenna on the uh, a DVR of course because we got a linear antenna on the mini quad, on the micro quad. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, take this off. I'm going to put a, uh, where did I put it, a pagoda antenna on here. One of these. I think it's going to make a world of difference to that video. I think it's going to be stunningly better, clearer. Few of those dropouts when you're flying in proximity to buildings and other reflective surfaces. I'm also going to have a look, maybe, maybe I might put a Runcam Swift on here, the Mini Swift. Mini Swift, that'd be perfect on there, wouldn't it? Although this is not a bad camera for a CMOS, it's only 520 lines, and the Mini Swift would be great. Got to be careful of the weight though. See how it works out. Stay tuned, this will be a work in progress. So if you want to buy one of these, you know, they sell them everywhere, Banggood everywhere. I don't make commissions on anything, so you can choose where you buy it if you want to buy it. But I'd say um, this is, you know, brushless, indoor, outdoor, micro quad. It seems pretty tough. I have crashed it a couple of times, actually. That wasn't the first flight that you saw. Um, crashed it a few times, nothing broke. So, yeah, I think they're about $99 US, 100 bucks, and that's not bad considering what you get. It's a, you know, full-featured little mini quad. There you go. If you've got questions, comments, put them in the usual place. I'll do my best to answer them. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Enjoy your flying, and I'll clear the bench, do something else. I feel a fixed-wing Friday coming on.